Hey Nerd Jack Nation, and welcome to History Of. I'm your host and resident superhero nerd, Aaron Waller, and this is the series where we do a deep dive into various comic book characters, both heroes and villains, and give a little bit more insight as to who they are and why they do what they do. And in today's video, we're talking about a character that was suggested by a viewer, and who happens to be one of my favorite web heads and one of my favorite costumes in comic book history, and that's Ben Riley, aka the Scarlet Spider. Ben Riley was created by Jerry Conway and was based on the Stan Lee and Steve Ditko famous Spider-Man, and first appeared in The Amazing Spider-Man number 149 in 1975, but wouldn't be named as Ben Riley until Spider-Man number 51 in 1994, and not even suit up as the Scarlet Spider until Web of Spider-Man number 118, also in 1994. Now, Ben didn't get a name for nearly 20 years for a very specific reason. He was actually a nameless clone made from Peter Parker's DNA by the Jackal in an effort to torment Spider-Man for the death of Gwen Stacy. The Jackal would then activate a bomb that only one Spider-Man could survive and ends up killing the clone. Spider-Man then retrieves the clone's body and gives it a proper burial. But it turns out that the clone was actually not dead thanks to an injection given to him earlier by the Jackal. After regaining consciousness, the clone witnesses Peter and Mary Jane embrace and realize he must be the clone as he hadn't yet reached the point of accepting emotional feelings for Mary Jane. He would spend the next five years in New York and take up the name Ben Riley, which is a combination of Uncle Ben's first name and Aunt May's maiden name. After taking ill and meeting scientist Seward Trainer, Ben embraces his new name and persona and Seward helps him procure documents of his new identity so he can work. But blood Blending in the world would be no easy task as his spider sense would go off constantly and he would involve himself in helping police deal with several instances. He would then travel around the US and abroad doing various jobs including being a janitor, English teacher, and other odd jobs before eventually returning back to New York where he would learn of Aunt May's declining health and once again meet face to face with Peter Parker. They would initially not trust one another but eventually become friends and he would take up the Scarlet Spider name and work with Spider-Man until eventually Seward Trainer would return and reveal that Ben was actually the real Peter Parker all along. The two would agree to keep their names despite going through a massive identity crisis and Peter would hang up the suit when he finds out Mary Jane is pregnant, leaving Ben as New York's sole Spider-Man. But when Peter was put on trial for murder, Ben would take his place in prison and Peter would continue heroing as the Scarlet Spider. Honestly, any story involving these two characters is both extremely intriguing and very confusing. After being pronounced innocent, he would go back to heroing while Peter and Mary Jane would leave town. Ben would then join the new warriors but never really feel accepted because he didn't want to reveal his true identity. Identity. Ben would then start using the Spider-Man suit and persona thanks to Peter. He would also try and retain the friendship between Spider-Man and Johnny Storm, and even be given a Fantastic Four communicator just in case. He would then fully start just doing his own thing from there, working at a coffee shop, dyeing his hair blonde, and setting himself apart from Peter while still being Spider-Man and dating Jessica Carradine, who would later be revealed to be the daughter of Uncle Ben's killer. Yikes. And also during this time, he would encounter the X-Men and have to explain his long, complicated backstory before helping them stop Mr. Sinister from obtaining a sample of Carnage, to which Ben would have to eventually bond with Carnage to prevent anyone else from being harmed by it before being driven out and going back to Cletus Cassidy. After several other adventures, he would make his way to Las Vegas and bring back the Scarlet Spider suit, during which time he would meet the personification of death and become entangled with some demonic conflict. Once again, yikes. Once back in New York, he would encounter Peter again and the two would have a back and forth on the Spider-Man persona before eventually after proving himself, Peter gives his blessing for Ben to once again take up the mantle of Spider-Man. He would also go on to have a big battle with Kraven the Hunter and after the death of Doctor Strange, realize just how much the world needed Strange but even how much more it needed Spider-Man. Now despite having one of the greatest suits and stories of Spider-Man in my opinion, he hasn't really been featured in live action as of yet but he has been in animated properties like the Amazing Spider-Man animated series and Spider-Man vs. The Sinister Six as well as his suit appears as several alternate suits in a variety of Spider-Man video games. Now Ben Riley is a clone of Spider-Man, so he has a lot of the same exact powers as Spider-Man does, so instead of rehashing the same old same old list of powers, let's move right along to the new segment recommended reading and give you some comics to get to know Ben a little bit better and see him in action. If you want to go through Ben's origins, I would recommend starting with The Amazing Spider-Man number 149 and then jump to Spider-Man number 51 where he would get his name. But if you want the good Scarlet Spider stuff, I recommend starting with The Web of Spider-Man number 118 where he starts wearing the blue hoodie and classic red suit. But if you want to see his transition from Scarlet Spider to Spider-Man, check out Sensational Spider-Man. And if you want a more real world story, check out Spider-Man Life Story that takes place more chronologically with the characters meeting and interacting in a naturally aging story taking place back in the 60s. The Clone Saga is also a great arc from 2016 which would see Ben Riley return in a wild yet divisive story. But if you're looking for a dark story, Ben Riley's Scarlet Spider takes place right after the clone conspiracy and see Ben in Las Vegas dealing with a lot of personal demons. And finally I also recommend checking 
checking out a more recent Ben Riley story in which he suits up as Spider-Man, which starts in The Amazing Spider-Man number 75. So those are some of the things you need to know about the Scarlet Spider. Was there anything in this video you may not have known otherwise or that you learned? Let me know in the comment section down below. And also while you're down there, leave me a comment as to any other characters you would like to see on this series. Your suggestion might become next week's video. Also while you're down there, be sure to hit like, subscribe, and ring the bell notification so you miss out on any future videos from me or the rest of the Nergenic team. And also be sure to follow us on Instagram at Nergenic so you miss out on any special news, announcements, or articles at Nergenic.com. But in the meantime, if you want even more video content from us, check out these videos on screen, like my recent video talking about who the best Batman is, or check out this video where I talk about the top five picks for who could play Wolverine in the MCU. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. We really do appreciate it, and we hope to see you in the next video.